circle. The drive. Oh, and that was a goal. Can you believe what we just It is episode number three of Hockey Night Insider. What's up, everybody? Glad to have you along. Nick Ismani, my partner, Parker Kalman, and a great show ahead for you today. We got some good guys, Parks. Um, you know, right off top, how you doing? Everything good? Everything's good. Uh, had a had a nice little tournament this past weekend. Oh, okay. uh, we uh, we ended up facing Eton Shavera, a friend of the podcast, and uh, didn't go as well as I would have liked. Went in Eton. I better went good. I, I better went good for him though. <laughs> went, went very well for him. I had a couple little glove saves on him, which were nice. But he he and the boys uh, scored quite a few on me. So, all right, all right. Are you a chirper? Are you well. a chirpy goalie? I feel like you're probably a chirpy goalie. I'm I'm like the I'm like I'm like man that was a great shot. I'm the guy that's like giving them compliments out there, and uh, kind of re- the reverse psychology, kind of pep talking them up a little bit, and uh, trying yeah, to joke around with them out, a little bit. It does yeah, for sure. I, th- I think like, it. What, what's he doing? What's his game plan here? Why is he doing this? Absolutely gets into their head a little bit. You know why is he why is he coming out here and telling me that was a great shot? Like shouldn't he be? You know. You know, they're they're running into me and I'm the one that's like, hey, you good? You good? You all right? You all right? All right. Get back out there. You know, I was, uh, I was always a, I was always a center parks. So I wouldn't know how to take that. I'd be like, what's your problem? <laughs> like, what is your what is your deal? Get out of here. I definitely like, get some looks. Okay? <laughs> I had a I had a buddy on another team. He came up and he and he face washed me. And yeah. uh, he's a he's a good buddy of mine. So he can we mess around and stuff. And then the, the ref yeah. comes up to me after and he goes, he goes, hey, you know, that guy? Are we all good? Is it, you know, that guy? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're all good. We're all good. So it was it was all good fun. The refs love you. I guarantee it. Oh, all the time. They're they're always, yeah, you know, yeah, we're yeah. always chit chatting. <laughs> so it's a good time. That works in your favor. All right. Let's talk about let's talk about our guys today. Uh, let's take them one at a time. Eddie Limbaga coming on the show. Man, this is a guy that has worn so many hats props to him he just made the usa masters team but holy smokes what a guy Eddie, and what a hockey player eddie limbaugh is absolutely and uh and i've known eddie since i was a little kid playing at the rinks in irvine you know not a lot of people know this but he was running the rinks and he owned those rinks for a long time so yeah. i i grew up watching eddie play and obviously you know uh eddie's the owner of rocket puck which is obviously a huge influence on the roller hockey game uh, especially down mm-hmm. here in southern california yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, Eddie's kind of been an entrepreneur. I mean, it was the Gretzky Center, and then it turned into the 949, mm-hmm. uh, which is where he kind of came into it. Now it's the rinks when the Ducks jumped in on it. And then he he acquired Rocket Puck from Darren Goodwin a long time ago. So yeah, Eddie's kind of been all over the place. Great to have him on the show. Look I would always see... I would always see Eddie, uh, you know, at the rinks kind of managing things. And then last sure. season in the EDL, he played with Eton in the Pacific Attack. I didn't know, but he can play, man. Like he is a fantastic roller hockey player too. So don't let it go, you know, unsaid that that dude can absolutely play some puck. Zip's got great hands and he's got a little fire too in that belly. Still, still does. <laughs> absolutely. We'll, we'll catch up with Eddie and we'll find out what he's doing away from hockey as well. PJ Martino joins the show. Right. What, a, what an absolute stud of a player he is. Absolutely. Yeah, he's, he's someone that I, I always see on those rosters for teams like Black Ice. He's always in the pro finals playing up against Palma. I feel like they have a good uh, rivalry going on. I'd love to ask him a little bit about that and what he thinks about the uh, the rivalry that they're always playing each other inside of the Narch big uh, big finals and stuff. So look looking forward to talk to PJ. And then Mike Callahan, also a uh, guest of the show today. Absolutely, Mike Callahan, and he he has so much roller experience playing back with the uh, LA Blades. You know, all you fans of the OC Blades here in Orange County, uh, a huge Mm -hmm. organization for roller hockey uh, might might recognize that name, but it was a professional hockey team back in L.A. So really Mm -hmm. excited to talk to him. And of course, he has a son that played with the Red Wings. So definitely want to chime in with that and get some NHL info from him as well. 
the beginnings of professional roller hockey with the ball and the ramp behind the ring, capitalizing on <laughs> Surge and Cali of Wayne Gretzky, number 99. Right. I don't know if you ever heard of him, Parks. He was back. He was a good player back in the day. I heard a couple 99. things about him. Uh, 99. Hmm, I see a couple guys in my men's league who uh, get a lot of chirps for wearing number 99. So you can't wear 99. <laughs> is, that, is that where that comes you guys, from? You know? <laughs> yeah, probably. Guys can't do that. You chirp them. If you don't be the nice absolutely. Guy with those guys. Right, absolutely. Right, those guys will get a little, uh, <laughs> little, little earful. All right, let's get this kicked off. Uh, on the other side of the break, it is Mr. Eddie Limbaga joining the show. Hockey Night Insider episode three kicks off right after this. We have a saying, okay? How you do anything is how you do everything. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that before. How you do anything is how you do everything. As often or as many times or as many chances you have to put your kid around quality people, you have to take advantage of them. I'm a father of three. My kids are all adults at this point in life. And the influence that Peter had over my son is something that to this day, we can go back, channel, and talk about. And any time in life when you have a chance to be around a person that has these absolutes, the way he lives his life, there are a few people that are the genuine article. I am telling you with everything in my heart and soul, if you can have your children around people like Peter and his staff, they're gonna be better humans. And yes, we want them to be better hockey players. And yes, we want them to be more successful in the classroom and all that. But I'm telling you, the thing that is not sold, he doesn't put on his flyers is, hey, be a better person. Get around Peter, be around the, the, the farm tough culture, and you're gonna be thrilled with what happens with your child. All right, back with you on Hockey Night Insider, and I love this guy. I mean, I feel like I say this about most of our guests because uh, we've been around the roller world for quite some time, but Eddie Limbaga joining the show with Parks and I, and uh, this is another one that God, I keep dating myself on these episodes, but boy, oh boy, do we go way, way back. Uh, and like just about everybody in the world and in, and in, in the sport of roller hockey, so many different things going on. We'll get into all of them, but uh, how are you? How are you, Eddie? Doing good. Played a little hockey this weekend. And, uh, well, thank you for the introduction, Nick. And uh, good to see you, Parker. Thank you guys for having me. Um, played a little hockey this weekend. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, let's start there. I mean, you're doing a lot of different things, and I feel like we're going to go in reverse uh, order here. But you are still playing hockey. I mean, you were always a stud out there on a rink. I mean, I think being around roller, always watching you play and you zip around and just your speed, your prowess. I mean, you were always good. But listen, it's no secret. Guys like you and me were getting a little bit older. How are how, how you feeling? How are the lungs feeling? Uh, the lungs are uh, the lungs are not so much there, but uh, the legs are definitely not there. They're uh, they get sore, a little bit tired quicker, and um, the the, uh, the good thing with me is at least I'm training in high altitude since I live in Wrightwood, California, a mountain town. Right, right. How is how how how'd you play? How was the weekend? How was it being back on the rink? I know you do play a lot, but big tournament, obviously. How how'd you feel? Uh, it was, I felt good. Uh, you know, I played in three divisions and that was probably the biggest challenge. Um, Damn. ended up being <laughs> yeah, big number, 14 games over the three day weekend. And you know, I figured if I was going to be down there and commit to the weekend, let's test the ability and see how, uh, see how the legs and lugs would hold up and see how the skill would hold up and played in uh, my age group of 45s, 35s and senior a B and ended up in senior a playoffs. That's awesome. Now, now, Eddie, uh, you you and I go way back. You might not know it, but you were running the rinks in Irvine, which is, you know, for those who don't know, is like the roller hockey mecca of, you know, at least the United States. Um, it's where it all goes down. It's where, you know, a bunch of the big tournaments are played. What was your experience like running those rinks when those tournaments were going on back in the day? I mean, it's just full of excitement. I mean, you have all the new skilled players coming in. You have all the pro level guys and players from all over the nation and the world coming out. And the best thing that I always loved about it was it's like a family reunion. You got everybody coming in for hockey for the weekend and it's, you get to see everybody. And sometimes you don't get to see them all the time, but then that one weekend, or if it's one of the finals weekends, you get to see them for two weeks long. 
Uh, pal, yeah. let's talk a little bit about uh, Rocket Puck. Um, obviously, this is an endeavor that you've kind of had for quite a while. It's something that you, you've hung on to, and you're kind of now synonymous with it. Where, where's the growth in that aspect of the game, and, and does it... Do you see it continuing? Is that a changing technology? I mean, is it something that you're looking at? Sort of kind of give me the past, the present, and the future of Rocket Puck. So the Rocket Puck's been around since 1999, developed by Darren Goodwin. Um, great puck, always one of my favorite pucks. And then when I had the opportunity to purchase the business, um, you know, I was I was very proud to be able to, to purchase it and distribute it, get it more promoted within different countries and uh, different parts of the United States as well, too. So, I mean, we have a lot of distribution in North America, and then we also have uh, multiple distributions in anywhere between Italy, France, and then also um, Colombia is a big pusher right now, as well as Brazil. Now, with with there's been so many pucks that have been added, you know, of course you have the still map puck, um, you know, you have like these training pucks, like, uh, you know, you have Green Biscuit. Uh, we talked with uh, with Green Biscuit last week. What's your, uh, what's your, you know, as far as what roller hockey needs, like, like what is, what is your opinion as far as, um, all the new competition? Are you welcoming this competition or, uh, you know, are, are you looking to continue rocket puck? I know it's a lighter puck. It's something that I've always grown up on. Uh, so what's yeah, your same. thoughts on the competition that's out there? Um, well, with the green biscuit, I think there's definitely a great training puck, um, there's everybody can't always play indoors on the perfect perfect temperature perfect flooring where you have a plastic flooring whether it be sport court uh still mat uh there's also um you also also got the joker floors that's out there in italy as well too so there's a lot of great flooring and not everybody has opportunity to skate on that plastic flooring so to have an outdoor cement concrete asphalt type of puck like green biscuit i think is great so everybody has lots of training that the the original green biscuits heavier as well too so that helps with you know strengthening of the hands as well um we've got the the new puck still mat that's entered into the market in the north america as well too um the floor is amazing and great i think the rocket puck also performs wonderful on those floors as well too and still mat um it's heavier so it makes it it makes it a little bit uh a little bit heavier, a little bit tougher to do some stick handle moves with them, in my belief. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of people grew up in the heydays of roller hockey is playing with Rocket Puck, Mach 1, IDS Pucks, and those are lighter pucks. And that may have contributed to what roller hockey players are known for is their hands being fast, quick, and just, you know, very good stick handling type of players. And that really translates to their ice game as well, too. Yeah, and I and I think, like everything in roller hockey, right? There's multiple different tournament series. There's multiple different pucks. There's there's a couple of different ways to skin the cat, and I feel like that most people in the hockey world find a way, and there's find room for everybody. Nobody's trying to monopolize anything, and I think that the variation is probably a good thing, Eddie. I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, competition, whatever you may want to call it, you know, competition, but I'm an, uh, I'm an abundance kind of guy. And I think there's, there's room for everybody. And I think there's plenty of space and market space for everybody. And, you know, everybody has, you know, their choice, you know, there's a new tournament series out there and um, they, uh, they did a poll that's us roller cup. They did a poll and rocket puck was chosen to be their, their puck of choice. So that's one of the reasons why they're using rocket puck as their tournament. All all boats oh. rise with the water. Is that the expression? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm the worst uh, at saying so. <laughs> rising tides raise all boats. I think something like that. Yeah, yeah. Get, you're Gizmo close, got buddy. It. Gizmo gets it. Same, same, same. <laughs> Is that from a movie? <laughs> no, I think that's it's like probably one of those, some movie. Uh, yeah, one of those. Uh, 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 Confucius or something along those lines. You know? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. I got a million of those. Parker Kalman. Too. Parker Kalman. You yeah. can quote it. <laughs> All right. yeah. yeah. You know, like that Michael Scott guy said, you miss 99% of the shots you don't take. You know, same thing, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. I think it was him exactly. or that Gretzky guy, but whatever that guy, that guy didn't do anything. Who? Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Parks. <laughs> uh, you know, Eddie, I, I, I know uh, – we always, you know, we've gone back and forth and, and uh, you know, something you told me that I, I didn't know about you is you've had some involvement with the Special Olympics. And Ooh. I would love to hear about that uh, involvement as well. So I always had, uh, I, ever since, so I started working at the Gretzky Center as an Upland Laverne. So kind of in the, 
the way back when of when it was really the late 90s the heyday of roller hockey everything's growing that's when uh wayne gretzky came out to southern california in the late uh late 80s and that's what sprung the gretzky centers to become the you know the five the five rinks that they had in or four rinks in southern california one in um Cary, north carolina and i worked there and i had a special group that would come during the day and that's when we did a lot of office work and a special group would come in during the day and um, they were named O Park and they were special needs adults that needed a job and cleaning the glass was one of their jobs that they could do and it was during the day when there wasn't a lot of traffic not a lot of people so we always had uh, we always had people coming in and cleaning the glass and our glass is always clean thanks to this O Park group when I ran the rink in Irvine, I found out there's a chapter in Orange County that did the same thing. And they, so during the day at Irvine, we had, we had a special needs group coming in and cleaning the glass and that was their job. I mean, some of the, some of their pay was subsidized by the state and then the rest was paid for by um, myself uh, as owner of the rink or when the ducks owned the rink, um, they had, they would subsidize and pay the rest of the, uh, the their pay as well. Um, and then I was approached by, the special olympics of southern california and they said they wanted a venue for a tournament so we hosted it in irvine for several years i know they went to huntington beach for a few years because we had some rain issues but one of the neat things that i got to do because i owned the pro shops in huntington beach irvine and corona i had a very strong connection with the retail industry and when the special needs team of Southern California went to travel for their world tournament, which was in Egypt that year. Um, I got the privilege of getting them sublimated jerseys, just like we do for our roller hockey kids. And I outfitted them in sublimated jerseys, USA designed. Um, we also had helmets with stickers on them. We had sticks and we had bags made for them gloves. Uh, they, they preferred Mylik helmets. We had a lot of Mylik helmets. It was, it was fun to be able to be a part of sending them away and letting them feel like just hockey rock stars wearing all USA. Incredible. Gear. That's awesome, yeah, Eddie. That's, that's awesome. incredible. That's awesome. And you, was, you, you've done, to be able done to a lot with, well, that's just it, right? I, I said that to somebody the other day. I, Eddie, you, you know me, Parks, you, you know me pretty good too, but it's uh, the, the, the greatest things that you will ever accomplish in life are doing great things for other people with no expectation of return. And if you can, if you can put a smile on somebody's face or make somebody's life better, you've, you've, you know, you've achieved something. 100%. 100% agree. Yeah. You've also done a lot, of, a lot of stuff internationally uh, for yourself. You've been a part of Team USA for for a while. What, what's that experience been like for you? Do you do you see yourself being involved with it on on some level or in some capacity moving forward? Um, yeah, I'm gonna continue playing. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I played in the tournament this weekend. I try to make my way to to play the tournaments. Um, so that way, one, I could showcase that I'm still playing. I'm still active. I still have the ability to compete, um, no matter what the level. Um, and that would provide me with hopefully a seat to make it on the veterans team, which is coming up pretty soon here in, ju in June, early June, it'll be in B Baca, Spain. And that's where the world inline skate world championships for, they have 38 plus, which is the master's division, 45 plus is veterans. And then they have legends, which is 52 plus. So I'm at 46, this will be my second year on the veterans. So hoping to continue there. And then if uh, so long as I could hold on to my spot and my seat there, happy to compete and represent our country out there and, uh, and wherever it's, it is in Europe because they host that tournament in Europe every year. So I, I, really, I really enjoy looking forward to representing USA out there. The people that we play against, it's very similar. It's, you know, it's like a reunion. You see all these people from different countries whenever you go out there to play. Um, but at the same time, you know, as soon as you step onto the rink, it's, it's uh, no holds bar. We got to make sure we try to get the W, you know, <laughs> all that we can. Well, I've seen you play in the in the elite draft league last year with the Pacific Attack and and Eton Chavera, and and you can definitely play. So I wish you the best of luck in representing <laughs> the USA. Thank you. Keeping me humble here. <laughs> That's getting bigger. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My head's not going to fit in the screen. Uh, uh, there's uh, there. <laughs> we can go wide. Go on. We can go on the wide shot for that. Yeah, it gets too big, pal. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, while we got a little th little bit of time left here, is obviously there's uh, there's life outside of hockey too. Um, and you have found yourself a very successful niche in the uh, the real estate side of things. Mm. 
Yep. So uh, those that you don't know, um, one of the ways that I ended up owning the Irvine Rink was that I had I had capital to invest and come into a hockey rink. And I mean, between payroll, lease, expenses, upgrades, uh, the way that I had that money back then, back in 2007, was because I invested in real estate. So when life after hockey happened, I decided that, hey, you know, real estate got me into a foot in the door in a lot of places that were great and amazing. So what is my next business that I'm going to get into? And I dabbled with a few things, but then I found my way into real estate doing anywhere between property management for short term rentals, which are Airbnbs, VRBOs, long term rentals, um, also doing uh, real estate fix and flips as well. So a lot of things that I've been encountered with just because I have the ability and the skills that I was already doing before the hockey world and hockey life, but now just making it more of my full time job. Uh, how's the family doing, buddy? Family's good, man. I uh, my my little girls. They were uh, they were the girls that would show up to hockey with face makeup on because they were in cheerleading and they'd leave cheer practice and show up to the hockey rink with throw on their helmet and the face shield. But then they had a uh, they had makeup underneath there, and um, they're uh, they're all adults now. My my oldest daughter's twenty three, graduated college, working from home in her Jeez. big girl job. And, yep, my youngest, she's uh, 19, second year in um, UC Riverside. She wants to be a psychiatrist, and she's so awesome. that means medical school. But super proud of them. They're hardworking. <laughs> they're hardworking. And, like heck, if they they. I know they're I know they're going to do it. They're just like their dad. Whatever they set their mind to, they're going to do it and succeed. And you know, I love that they're uh, they 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 enjoy life, but they take care of take care of business. So just like that awesome. again. <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, Parks, what else you got? Uh, it sounds like you got to sell a lot of rocket pucks to help uh, <laughs> help get them through school here. <laughs> Go buy rocket pucks, people. Pucks, all right, it's a lot of pucks and a lot of houses. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, Eddie, I we appreciate uh, it so much. I know we're wrapping it up here, but uh, just appreciate you coming out, and you know, it's always good seeing you over at the rinks, and you know, obviously playing three games, you're probably a little bit exhausted. Wouldn't have it any other way. You got to burn this energy right. somehow. And thank you guys for having me. <laughs> I appreciate you guys and everything that you're doing with Hockey Night Insider. When I want to keep up and get to get to know what's going on in the hockey world, I know where to go. Eddie, we love you tons, buddy. I can't thank you enough. I miss you. It's great chatting with you. And uh, I can't wait to see you soon around the rings. Thanks again for coming on, pal. Thanks. All right, Eddie Limbaga, what a legend. Come on now. Man wears all the hats and one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in the sport. And like he said, guy can still play. Take it from me. All right, hey, listen, we got more coming up on Hockey Night Insider. Presented by The Answer is Yes. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this. It happens in a flash. A hush. The crack of thunder. Practice paid off. Preparation made good. When everything we work to build takes flight in that moment, time stops. Through clouds of doubt, we emerge our highest and best selves. Together, we climb every day. Together, we reach from within for a higher calling. Together, we soar. This is our purpose. Our season. Our time. We are Lopes. Rising. All right, we are back with you here on HNI and our next guest. Uh, well, if you know roller hockey or hockey in general, you know this name because uh, he scored some legendary goals and he's won a lot of championships across pretty much every single platform and tournament series out there. PJ Martino joins the show and uh, PJ, it has been a minute. It, it, it's always really great seeing you. And I, it's funny, your name always is one that I will forever remember because back at the, the Narch finals at, I, I forget what it was, Tico or Jermaine Arena, whatever iteration it was, yeah, uh, we put it on Jermaine. It was at Jermaine. We put it on yeah. TV, the, the the pro finals, and I got to do the play-by-play for it. And you were absolutely stunning in that game. So it's always one of those uh, those core hockey slash broadcast memories for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll never forget that one either. That was, a, that was a hell of a run we had. 
when you think back on it, and, and we'll talk about it a little bit more later too, but you've had some unbelievable runs with some incredible groups of guys, obviously, uh, that one especially. But is there one that sticks out in your mind that 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 kind of sails above the rest or, or has that kind of sort of core memory? Absolutely. And I would say it was that one, actually. That was the the first Norch. That was basically the first pro tour we ever won with Black Ice. And um, we were so young. It was, I was only like 18, just turned 18. Like it was just, um, you know, that was a crazy run. We started in the as the ninth seed, had that play in game against the eighth seed. And then the next day just went on that run. But, uh, you know, those teams were stacked. The snipers were stacked. Uh, Next Gen was sick. Um, even that revision team was sick. So, uh, you know, to win that tournament was unreal. Absolutely unreal. <laughs> and PJ, yeah, it's, a, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. I, uh, I've been seeing your name on all the rosters. You know, I know you have Piha coming up here. I've, you know, uh, you've been playing with Black <laughs> Ice. I know you played with the OC Blades at the uh, Winter Wars uh, a couple weeks ago. And I just, uh, I want to know about, you know, you're a guy who's played every roller hockey tournament uh, out there. And I know that Piha, uh, they're finishing things up with the championship with the seven game series. Now, what is your preference as far as how tournaments are played? You know, I know you and Palma uh, have a big rivalry with Black Ice and Palma kind of meeting them each other in the finals for uh, Winter Nationals for Nar- Narch. And I just kind of want to hear your take on, uh, you know, what you prefer as far as all these tournaments uh, are concerned. Um, yeah, I mean, I love the Palma Pro Tournament. Obviously, that one is um, always a blast. You got all the teams there. Um, I feel like everybody makes sure they goes to that one just because it's, you know, the biggest cash prize and everything. But um, the seven game series is really cool. I would love to do that against Palma. Maybe do that. Um, but yeah, I would have to say my favorite tournament is the Palma Pro, just because I feel like it is it's kind of like on that pedestal where, um, you know, everybody looks at that tournament like it's the biggest one, I would say. And it's, it's, there's none of those bottom teams, you know, every every game is competitive. It's pretty nice, you know, coming home with that 20K cash prize, right? Isn't that the, isn't that the cash <laughs> yeah. prize for... Yeah. It's always nice when they put a little prize money on top too. So, Oh yeah, of course. Of course. (laughs) So many, we we hear about this all the time, uh, Peach, but like the, the dichotomy between roller and ice and, and the benefits for both. And some people have their own schools on it. And some people sort of, you know, say it's great for the game. Other people I remember back in the very beginnings weren't for it, but what, what's your take on, on that and the transition between the two? I mean, we've seen so many great players uh, manage both of those. I mean, most recently Bedard, but what is your take on, yeah. on having the effect of both of those? Yeah. I mean, I've always played both and I always love playing both. I mean, I think that's why I never really got serious with ice because I just always wanted to be able to play both, you know? Um, and then I think it just makes you a better player, like the creativity and the freedom to just do whatever you want on the roller rink without um, getting yelled at at a coach for trying too much or doing this or doing that. And then also in roller, you, you got to be disciplined too because, you know, you make a you make a wrong play and a turnover. And it, it usually turns out being a goal for the other team. So, you know, there is a lot of discipline in like playing smart, um, but yeah, I think, and then ice, I, I always love playing ice just cause it's physical, you know, love the hitting part. Um, you know, even a fight here and there, I wouldn't mind, uh, if they brought hitting and fighting back into roller, I think that would be awesome for the game. Cause you know, a lot of people just watch ice because they don't know shit about hockey, but they like the hits, they like the fights. Um, <laughs> I think it would bring a lot of attention to Roller if it was back in the game, you know? Uh, I agree with that. Agreed. little contact. little contact never hurt anybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know? You should have the right to hit somebody if they're pissing you off, I think. Absolutely. I wish that existed in, in the real world at this moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Now, uh, PJ, you're, you were talking a, a little bit about, um, you know, some things you might change. I think that's my favorite question to ask some, you know, roller, roller guests that come on here uh, with, with all of, you know, obviously there's a difference in rules between ice hockey, you know, being five on five uh, offsides, icing, all that sort of stuff. Is there anything uh, rules wise? I know you want to add the fighting. But is there anything rules wise that you would change with roller hockey to maybe make it a little bit more exciting? Um, I mean, I know Piha does this and like a lot of other tournaments, I guess they try and do it, but like the count behind the net. So you can't stand behind the net too long and uh, waste time because obviously, uh, you know, for the fans, nobody wants to watch that. They don't want to watch you stand behind the net, even though it is, um, you know, I feel like in 2014 when we won, that was kind of because we were stalling and just, you know, we would go up by a goal or two and then we would just take it behind the net and just keep taking it back, keep taking it back. But, um, you know, obviously fans don't like to watch that. So um, I think that would be a good rule, you know, maybe like a three second behind the net and you got to skate it out. Um, but other than that, I don't think there's many rules. I wouldn't want to add any rules like offsides or anything like that. I think that takes away from the game. So, yeah, totally. I would just leave it as it is. But maybe that that count behind the net, I would say that's speed point. it up a little bit. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just so you can't sit behind the net because you know that gets super boring. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, it would have made it easier on me broadcasting that uh, that game in 2014 and all that time I had to fill. That's all right. I just pumped your tires every time you're holding on to the puck. That's all I did. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> I make that yeah, national we were just TV trying to debut, baby. Yeah, yeah, we were just trying yeah, to survive no. back then. Yeah, no, you did more than survive that game. That was yeah. that was a ton of fun. That was a ton of fun to be a part of. Uh, it's one of my yeah. one of my biggest hockey memories was winning. Uh, I coached a Bantam Platinum team, uh, TMD eighty eight. A couple of those guys went on actually to play uh, college hockey and are still playing in the pros. But we won our Bantam Platinum Narch Championship inside that building in two thousand and five on that same venue in that arena. And it's just I, I, that for me, I think will always be one of the most iconic roller venues at least in my in my world i feel like when it went to florida that first year and then every time back after it was just such a cool place to play oh yeah definitely my favorite for sure and i was yeah. there in 2005 for that too i love that i love that place I always love going that's back. right that's right i gotta, i keep dating myself a little bit here but you you have a you have a big weekend um coming up and we, we touched on that seven game series a little bit but it is getting down to the, the championship series for Piha, tell me about the season so far for you guys, and sort of what you're looking ahead to for this for this for this upcoming uh, rip that you guys have. And you start off in Colorado, actually. Yeah. So um, um, during the season, um, we kind of walk through every t not every team, but you know, all of them are pretty close. I mean, I would say there's two teams that really gave us a problem: um, the Inferno from Pittsburgh, which is like the Gergers. Um, Noah Litsko, uh, the Sobo, Sobo brothers, um, Gage Clark, he's like a younger black guy. He plays with black ice sometimes. And, you know, the kid Noah plays on our black ice pro team, the Gergers. Um, but yeah, they're a good team and they've gave us good games. Usually, you know, one or two goal game. Um, and then the other team is the few which um, Derek Schultz and Matt O'Shaughnessy, usually they would play with our Sting team, but then for this year they came up with a rule that there's like a, I guess like a salary cap kind of, like where you could only have a certain amount of pro guys on your team. So they had to go play for that team, but um, they gave us a run for our money every time. Pretty good games. Um, and then we played the two out of three series for uh, – the playoff championship and that was um they beat us the first game then we beat them the second game and then the third game went to overtime and uh max halverson scored the game winner but um i think there was like seven seconds left in the overtime and then it would have went into double <laughs> overtime but but yeah competitive games and um now this team that we're gonna play in colorado they beat the Sting team, like our team last season, I wasn't playing, mm. and Billy Pascali didn't make it. But um, 
So we have a different team for this season. I think we're definitely better than the team was last year. So, um, yeah, hopefully we'll sweep them. That's that's the plan. Uh, get those lungs, get those lungs in gear. You're coming up to you're coming up to altitude, buddy. Fifty two eighty oh, yeah. in, uh, in the Denver I'm already, area. In the Rocky already Mountains, preparing. Brother. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Water, it's completely different. Hydrate. Hydrate. Yeah, keep it easy on the brewskis. <laughs> yeah, it really is so different. It's crazy how much you can actually feel it. It's not. Oh yeah, it's great for my golf yeah. game. Golf ball goes <laughs> miles longer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's really a thing, huh? I didn't even I didn't even know it was a real oh, thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Com- that's a complete. It's a complete and total thing. Absolutely, like it. You definitely wow. get. Uh, it makes me feel, it makes me feel great. And then the, soon, the moment I go back down to sea level, I'm like, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Some wow. humility. Um, uh, yeah, that's, you know, it's normal in the cars. <laughs> PJ. So, so I'm a, I'm a goalie and I always like to know, you know, you, uh, let's, let's use, you know, Piha as our example. You got the puck on your stick, you're headed in, you got a breakaway. <clears throat> what's, what's your move? Like, what are you going to? Mm. Um, I'll be honest. I never plan. I never plan on what I'm gonna do. It's really what the goalie's given me. But um, I would say a lot of the time I do end up doing like you know a fake shot, maybe lift the leg and then sweep around a him. little stutter, a little stutter, and go to my backhand. I feel like I go to my backhand a lot though. So then goalies start <laughs> cheating to the to that side so then sometimes i do end up going back to my forehand but um it's usually a deke i don't usually shoot it for the most part i'm usually deke okay. but but yeah i i definitely like to come in hot though if like say it's a shootout i'm definitely like coming in with speed i don't know i don't know how people go like super slow and i'm like yeah you're not that's, going that's around the circles taking the wide swing outside <laughs> you're, you're just going straight yeah, to the no, net I, I mean, I'll go a little wide, but like yeah, I'm yeah, definitely yeah. coming in with like a full head of steam. You know, I'm trying to put the goalie on his heels. All right. Yeah, All right. Who's cool. the uh, Who's the guy, PJ? You kind of really looked up to com- coming up in roller hockey. Was there one of those older icon guys that you kind of sort of modeled your game after, or really looked at and was like, "Oh man, that guy's the guy." You know, kind of like there's yeah. probably a bunch of kids doing to you right now. Who Who was that guy for you? Um, Thompson, definitely Thompson. Yeah. But also Johnny Mac, so it was you know the sh- the shooting side of Johnny Mac, and then like the controlling yeah. game of Thompson. So it's kind of a mix of both, and uh, yeah, I think that's definitely how I molded my game. You know, uh, I wanted to be offensively like Johnny Mac, but then control the whole game like Thompson because he was amazing at that, such a freak, and so smart. Uh, two he was just always the smartest, smartest player. Also, two of the classiest guys in the sport of roller hockey, then and now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, on the opposite side of that, is there anyone coming up in the roller world that you've kind of got your eye on? Mm-hmm. Um, there's definitely a few. Um, I've heard of this kid, Sammy Phillips. I've heard his name a bunch from people, and um, I played against him a few times. He's definitely a good player. Um Gage Clark is a really good player. Um, are these I mean, guys these are, that you play with guys. on Black Ice? Um, the guy, Gage Clark plays on the younger team usually, like juniors or something. Okay. Yeah, and then, uh, but he's a he's a Pittsburgh kid. And then Sammy Phillips, I'm not really sure where he plays. I think he's from PA or something. But I've just been hearing his name a ton, and like apparently he's really good. And I mean, I remember playing him. He was definitely, um, you know. He can definitely play for sure. So I'm looking forward to the, Oh, and uh, Sobo, too. Mm. The other kid, Sobo, he's really good, too. Smaller kid, but he's fast, really, really fast. Um, plays smart. I definitely like the way he plays. He would be a, a kid that we would pick up in the future, I think, for Black Ice. Um, and then Cal- as far as California, I don't really know the younger kids from out there, so I can't, I can't speak for them, but... You know the East Coast guys; those are uh, those are the guys I would say to look out for. All right, we'll we'll jot those names down, and we'll see in you know next few years popping up on those rosters on those stat yeah, check sheets. Them out. <laughs> 
Paige, before we let you go, what is the uh, what does the rest of this uh, sort of the tail end of winter and the summer look like for you? What do you have on the schedule? Where can we where can we see you? Where can we catch you playing? I'm gonna I'm gonna try to catch you in Colorado, but what uh, what does the summer tournament schedule look like for you? And what are you looking forward to? Um, so I'm gonna probably go to Nashville again. Maybe that Wish Cup tournament. I don't know if you guys know that one. Oh yeah. I've been, mm -hmm. the, I think the past two or three years I've been playing in that one. Then it'll be tours in Florida. Um, then Norwich and Cali, and then um, State Wars, Palm, Palm Pro. Okay. And then and then I'll probably go to Nashville again. Who doesn't like Nashville, right? <laughs> Country music, baby. I'm right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> Give me Broadway every day. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Well, uh, PJ, it's always it's always great seeing you, man. So been been proud of you for so long. Con congrats on all the success. Good luck um, in the championship with PI, and uh, just keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep making a difference because uh, there were guys that uh, you looked up to, but I guarantee there's a lot of young guys that are looking up to you right now. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Always good to see it. Anytime. It's always great seeing you too, kiddo. Behave yourself. Good luck this weekend. And yeah. you all hang around because we got more. We got more. We're not done with Hockey Night Insider. Stick around. We'll be back right back after this break. Welcome back to Hockey Night Insider. We are here with the Mike Callahan. And Mike, I'm so excited to talk to you today simply because you have such a dense, I think that's the word to use, a dense roller hockey, ice hockey, street hockey background. Uh, I want to tell some of the viewers just kind of that background. Let's go into that. And, uh, you know, where do you come from when it comes to hockey? And uh, I'd love to hear it. So I grew up in Toronto, Canada, played, you know, organized hockey my whole life. I stopped playing at 18, couldn't go on to juniors due to a knee, knee injury. Um, so hockey was basically over for me at a serious competitive level. I moved to California in 89, um, thought I wasn't going to ever play hockey again. Surprisingly, I ran into somebody who knew my brother-in-law who introduced me to the ball hockey rink down at Naughton Chapman at the time, which had 110 teams. And I went down there and started you know i was playing ball hockey already in toronto and and i had a passion for the sport and, and i found it here and it was really good and then i ran into some guys there that drew me to their ice hockey team which was you know a semi-pro league teams in san diego vegas alaska fresno um and then it brought me to roller hockey got me a trial with the la blades and uh Genie Bus being the owner, and I cracked the lineup and went from there. So, so now the revolution of uh, roller hockey. So obviously, roller hockey uh, came after ice hockey, and it sounds like you were kind of one of the OGs that saw the rise of roller hockey. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about what that was like? Uh, well, so once we heard there was going to be a pro roller hockey league in Anaheim and at the forum, at the pond and at the forum, you know, the guys was playing ice hockey with, oh, we got to do this. And uh, so, you know, got myself a pair of rollerblades, started joining a few leagues, one in Torrance, played a little bit in Whittier and got, got a tryout for the LA Blades, made the lineup. And, uh, you know, Jeannie did a great job of promoting the sport, selling, you know, we're playing in front of 8,000 people at the forum, a lot of them being young kids that were, you know, gravitating towards hockey and roller hockey especially. And uh, it was a fun time. And it was, you know, we did a lot of traveling and, and uh, played in some serious barns against some serious people. And it was no joke. There was some, some physical hockey that was being played at that time. And it was, 
very enjoyable. Yeah, I, I think back when I was a kid, uh, we had the Bullfrogs here in Anaheim. It was such a big deal, you know, that roller hockey. I, I grew up playing roller hockey. You know, I didn't jump into ice. So having that Bullfrogs team was really something to look up to. And then slowly it started to diminish. And obviously roller hockey, what it is today is much different than what it used to be like back then, obviously, with uh, the buses being involved with owning the uh, LA Blades. And uh, they own the Lakers. You know, they have a lot of money and they want to pour a lot of money into roller hockey. When today it's basically just a, a bunch of people that love the sport getting together and playing these tournaments. So with your background of ice hockey, ball hockey, uh, roller hockey, what are the differences? What do you like to view uh, with the, those differences? Is there something that you prefer viewing? Is there something that you prefer playing? I would love to hear about that. Um, I, I love playing all three of them. Um, right now I only play roller hockey for the simple reason is, um, ice hockey, some of the adult leagues, there's too many knuckleheads out there that think they're playing for the Stanley cup. And I found myself getting into too many scraps. So I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, roller hockey is, is it's a lot more guys have like a little more respect out there for, you know, they don't try cross the lines like some guys do in ice hockey. Uh, ball hockey is just it's hard because there's no gliding. Like if you want a, a line change in ice or roller, you can coast to the bench, you know, two strides and coast, but ball hockey, you got to keep your feet moving all the way there. So it makes it kind of tough. Um, I love all three facets of the game, but um, where I had my most success with blades and a little bit of pro beach, but yeah, roller hockey is where I had my most success. And Mike, obviously you've had a ton of experience with hockey, including your son, Mitch Callahan, who played uh, in the NHL with the Red Wings. What's that experience like being a father, watching your son uh, make it to the league? Well, that's, you know, that's every parent's, you know, dream come true when your son or daughter makes it to the pinnacle of the career that they're playing and playing at the highest level, which was fortunate for me, for the, my son playing for the Detroit Red Wings. His first, I remember his first game, Detroit flew us in there. It was in Columbus, and uh, I was, like, on cloud nine. It was, you know, it was, he worked hard his whole life to try to get to that level, and for him to achieve that goal was something special. Not only have you been able to experience the professional level of roller hockey, your son being able to experience ice hockey, you also have a little bit of pro beach hockey. Is that correct? Yeah, yes. Uh, Pro Beach lasted for three summers. It was televised on uh, ESPN. It was just north of the Huntington Beach Pier. They put us all up in a hotel right there in Huntington Beach. It was played on the weekends. Um, it was a lot of fun. And it, grew, it actually was probably more popular than I expected, to tell you the truth. Um, I played for a team called the Express all three years. Second year, we won it all, and uh, we happened to be the leading scorer of the East season and the MVP. So it was, uh, it was, it was a good run for me down there to tell you the truth. And what I liked about it the most was when I played with the blades, my son was only two and three years old and four. When I played pro beach, he was, um, seven, eight, nine. So he was able to remember it and enjoy it a little more as a, as the son of a guy playing, you know, professional roller hockey. So that, that was, you know, special to me as well. Now there's a group of pros right now that they're kind of bringing back pro beach hockey. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There's no goalie. No, nope, there's goalies. There's, there's, okay. Uh, there's goalies in pro beach, but they had a ramp behind the net. So guys would like, so you couldn't, go okay. behind, you couldn't be like Wayne Gretzky and park behind the net in his office. Cause there was a ramp there. So, and you would, you would like skate ramp. up the ramp and head on down and yeah. then skate the other direction. That is insane. You could, what a, what you a could niche idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if only in California, I don't know if for safety reasons and some liability purposes that they'll ever bring the ramps back. But I know that there's yeah. a big group of guys that love playing down by the beach. I don't, I don't know if they use goalies. I think they just have some little nets set up. They're just kind of yeah. passing the puck and, and handling it that way. But that's awesome. Who's your, uh, who's your NHL team? Is there, obviously you have some bias with the Red Wings. Who's your team that you yes. uh, like to follow? Um, Toronto Maple Leafs. So that's, that's right. That's my team. Toronto native. And they haven't they haven't won since I was three years old. So it's uh, it's been a tough go for me since '67. So 
Uh, here's here's a, a fact. My second favorite team would be Team Canada, right? So my son okay. and I have a battle. My son and I have a battle when it's Team Canada versus Team USA. We always have like a, a bet on dinner and what have you. Uh, he have, he actually made Team USA for the World Junior Championships, and he was playing against Team Canada. And I said to him before the game, I go, Mitch, I go, I hope you get a hat trick tonight, and you guys lose four three. And <laughs> he was like. <laughs> But that is a true story. You can ask him that. He wasn't one of his finer moments, but that's what, what I said. What ended, up, the team. what ended up happening uh, Can- in the game? Canada won quite handily, and my son didn't score. However, he did get the game-winning goal, took Cal to pull him against uh, Czechoslovakia to put him into the semifinal game. So that was pretty cool. A little, a little bittersweet, you know, obviously with your son losing, but your home, uh, your home country winning it. <laughs> down deep inside for usa but that was the only time i'll ever cheer for usa over canada there you go there you go obviously you know me being from here in california i'm always rooting for team usa there's a a big roller hockey tournament that's happened uh this year in europe that has a bunch of uh usa uh hopefuls trying to get their way over there so that's really exciting too now today how are you connected with hockey still obviously uh, I'm assuming your son's still connected. I, I know he does some coaching. How are you connected still today with the sport that we all love? Uh, I just play roller hockey on Thursday nights with the boys. A bunch of guys who I've played with Hell for yeah. the you know, last 30 years and, you know, just a night to get out. You know, we're we're all in our, you know, late 50s and early 60s now. So it's, uh, we can't go too hard, but we, uh, we still take it pretty serious. And uh, that's what we do. Thursday night's my big night out with the boys couple of pops, a little bit of a sweat. <laughs> Those are my Tuesdays. We're, we're, we're a little more competitive, I'm sure. But you got to get out to one of these tournaments. They have, uh, they have I think, some 40-plus, some 45-plus teams. And uh, would love to see you out in the future. I'd love, love to try it, to tell you the truth. I'm, I'm trying to get in shape for this ball hockey tournament that's coming up in a month or so. So we'll go from there. Uh, funny story down at TSA. Uh, where I play on Thursdays, a guy comes up to me and he's got like a gray goatee and gray hair. And he's like, Hey, Mike Callahan. I go, yeah. He goes, you were my favorite player when I was a kid. And I'm looking at this guy who's got like gray hair and gray goatee. And I'm like, damn, I'm old, man. (laughs) (laughs) When you said, when you said, uh, when you said you, uh, I believe you said you came down here in 89. Yes. I, I didn't want to tell yes. you what year I was born, just so just to not make you feel any worse than you probably already do with seeing all, all that going on. So, Mike, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, we obviously love the sport of hockey here. Uh, what's your prediction? This is going to be one of my last questions here. What's your prediction as far as the NHL concern? Obviously, you want your Toronto Maple Leafs to make it all the way. What do you think is going to happen uh, this year's Stanley Cup Finals? Okay, I think Florida is going to be really tough to beat. Uh, the West is, uh, I think, will come down to maybe Vegas and Colorado. That's that's what I think. To tell you the truth, I'd love to say the Kings, but uh, I'm not too I'm not too sold on their goaltending. To tell you the truth, so mm. thank you so much, Mike. We really appreciate the hockey experience that you have with being a pro roller hockey player with the Los Angeles Blades your son's experience of you watching him get to make it all the way to the NHL. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. We really appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Anytime call, boys. Good stuff there with uh, with Callahan Parks. Uh, what a, what a, I mean, what an interesting guy, right? I mean, talk about, you know, one of the godfathers. I mean, I'll say it. He's one of the godfathers of roller hockey based on, you know, what he did uh, with the RHI back in the day. You know, it's, it's, it's considering myself a younger guy, uh, even though I'm getting a little up there in age, (laughs) easy, easy. (laughs) It's always, it's always nice to hear about, you know, kind of where roller hockey came from. You know, I wasn't really, uh, in tune with it back then. Obviously it was huge, especially I, I didn't know the bus family owned the LA blades. Mm -hmm. Like that's crazy. So hearing about all that from him, you know, directly, you know, from the source of someone who was, who was there uh was really awesome so it was it was a pleasure to talk to mike callahan about uh, all his knowledge on on all different types of hockey ball hockey uh, ice hockey and of course roller so 
Oh, good stuff, buddy. Uh, a great interview, obviously. Great show. Uh, before we say goodbye, though, what do we? It's gonna. I'm gonna start asking these hard questions. It's getting. It's getting crunch <laughs> time in the in the playoffs here for the NHL. I know you. I know you got your favorites. Uh, uh, I think the Ducks are gonna gonna make it. Um, obviously. Uh, yeah, I don't do think. You, do I don't think got? fourth. Who do, you, who, who do you like? 14th place isn't going to cut it for the Ducks this year. You know, maybe we got a tank for someone in the first round next next season. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, I you got, never You got Chicago out. in trouble, too, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Chicago's, Chicago's sniffing around that first round pick again. I mean, I, at this point, I think Bedard would be happy with getting another young guy to, you know, pair pair him with. So, I, I mean, as far as the teams that are, you know, really looking good, I, my favorites to go deep into the playoffs, we talked about this on last week's episode, but the Boston Bruins, man, that team is just resilient mm-hmm. every single year. They're, you know, number one inside of their conference. They're going to be a pain to deal with when it comes to the playoffs this year. So, keep your eye out for them. Uh, you, is that is that your cup pick? I, I, I mean, it's hard not to pick them as the cup winners with just the consistency that they've had. So they have the experience. They got the young guys that are helping them out. So that's that's who I'm going with. Interesting to see Vegas getting away with yet some more long term IR trickery. How about we use that word? <laughs> yes. Yes. They like to they like to, you know, figure things out, especially on the coaching side. Uh-huh. I you know, always got to be threatened uh-huh. by the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, math is hard for those guys sometimes, but they seem to be doing <laughs> it very well on the back end. It reminds me of the teachers that told us that we'd never have uh, we we we'd never have uh, calculators in our pockets uh, moving forward, and that we had to learn how to do it longhand. Well, yikes! Thank yep. you, Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Parks. Well, hey, great stuff, man. Uh, great episode. Cannot wait to see you back here again. We hope you're all loving it as well. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow. Drop us some comments. Let us know. And if there's anybody you really want to hear from uh, in the hockey world in general, roller hockey, ice hockey, uh, let us know. and We will get them uh, on Hockey Night Insider. So uh, big props. Thank you so much to our uh, behind the scenes man, Mr. Steven. Uh, of course, Parks crushing it as always. And uh, to all you for uh, sticking with us and coming along for the ride. We, uh, we appreciate it. And we will see you next time on Hockey Night Insider. The king is dead!